Welcome to the Vintage Hollywood Archive. Our sexuality is a big part of our identity. Unfortunately for Tab Hunter, this wasn't the case. He had to hide who he was so he could become who he wanted to become. He warred with himself within, constantly faced with being happy or having a career. Make sure to watch this video until the end, and if you are new here, don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Vintage Hollywood Archive channel. I hate labels, Tab Hunter revealed in 2005 when he came out as a homosexual. His disdain for labels is understandable. The man's name was used for so many cringe statements. Six feet of rugged manhood to stir the heart of every woman, a movie trailer described him as. Hollywood journalists would call him the Psy Guy or the Boy Next Door. This would be the theme of his career the Hollywood pretty boy who was just there to make the women swoon and spend their money to watch him. He was Warner's swoon bait after all. He was Warner Brothers star, one of the last batch of actors that signed exclusively to a studio, the final set of the dying, brutal Hollywood system where stars were nothing more than products. Products couldn't have identities, they were to be used and discarded. Studios dominated the lives of their stars and determined all they would do. There was to be no resistance as compliance was key. America is a democracy, but its entertainment powerhouse sure wasn't. Stars suffered under the weight of these studios, and Tab Hunter wasn't an exception, dripping masculinity or not. The studio he worked for, Warner Bros. crafted his image for him, and he played to that image while inside he was torn apart and conflicted. But not many people knew about his conflict, the hunky actor tried his best to keep his private life private. He wasn't completely successful, but to a larger extent he was. However, what he couldn't truly hide was his sexuality. At the time, he couldn't be homosexual. The studio wouldn't allow it. He couldn't even reveal to his mother. So he had a choice. To choose his career as an actor or to be himself. Well, he chose his career, and it didn't help the conflict raging with him. The seeds of the man's internal conflict were planted in him when he was a boy. Born to a mother who was a Catholic through and through, the muscular star picked an interest in religion, which became deeper when his mother sent him to a Catholic school. It was in that school that he knew he was different, but he couldn't come out with it yet. He was the subject of a priest's unwanted advances, which he felt was ironic later revealed how he felt about his sexuality to a priest as during a gathering he partly explored his inner self with another man and felt he was sinning. This statement he made sums up how he felt inside. I felt that if you were with a man, he says, you were sinning. But if you were with a woman, you'd be lying. However, confessing to the priest would be one of his most regretted actions and would begin his troubles as a conflicted man. Rather than getting comfort and absolution, the priest treated him with absolute disdain. The priest allegedly made the Hollywood hunk less than human and someone who was unworthy of God's mercies and forgiveness. The incident would mark his departure away from Catholicism. Eventually, he became a Hollywood star, but he had to hide even more. One wrong move could doom his career, and it almost did. But the Hollywood studio system was great at distractions and providing empathetic misinformation. It expected its star would play the game of fooling the public, and Hunter did, masterfully even. Warner Bros. set him up with a different hot woman, and the star went along with it even if he didn't like it. Some sections of the media weren't convinced by Warner Brothers' game. They sought to rile the public against the star and would make veiled threats at him. Some began to question when he would settle down with one of the women that flocked around him. Others questioned if he was a good fit for the female actress that he went on dates with. The intensity of the rumors around him was so much that he considered marrying to protect his career. He wouldn't be the first Hollywood hunk to do so. Stars like Anthony Perkins, who was Hunter's ex, by the way, did the same. They married to keep their careers safe. Eventually, the square-jawed actor chose not to follow that line. The career he wanted to do it for wasn't fulfilling anyway. 
he was stereotyped and didn't feel tested. His roles required him to be shirtless and handsome. No wonder when he grew old, he never wanted to see any of his works. They had little importance to him, and to Hunter, those films were nothing more than a dog food commercial. However, it wasn't all that bad. Some of the last roles were pretty fulfilling, and it was through roles that he met the man he would be with for the rest of his life. But he didn't marry that man. At least, not in the traditional sense of what a marriage was. Remember, the star man didn't like labels, and he didn't put the married label on his relationship. He didn't feel like getting married in the official sense would make his relationship any stronger. Although, he did engage his partner. That label he would cope with. While it took longer, the actor attained contentment. He was able to reconcile the conflict raging within him. His religion, sexuality, and career, which seemed at odds with each other, eventually became one. The star acted in the film that allowed him to own his sexuality and return to Catholicism on his terms as a homosexual man. The peace that eluded him for much of his career eventually became his. You know him as Tab Hunter, but to his parents, he was Arthur Andrew Geline, born in Manhattan on July 11, 1931, and also a product of a dysfunctional family. His father was a deadbeat who didn't even show affection for Tab or his mother when Tab was born. Instead of expressing happiness, Tab's father sauntered into the hospital, threw candy at his mom, and left. What a man. Tab's home life was a tortured one, especially for his mother who was a German immigrant. His dad would take out his frustrations on her, and he was frustrated a lot. It got to a point that the broad-chested star's maternal grandfather had to engineer a move away from the dad. His grandfather got his daughter and grandson's clothes and had them travel to San Francisco. Life didn't get better for them, but they were happy, or as happy as they could be. All they had was each other, as they constantly had to move to find better opportunities to make money. There was no time to make friends, and even if they did, they would suffer for it emotionally when they separated from their friends. His mom usually wasn't around, too. The kind of jobs she got meant she had to leave her boys alone for longer periods. However, Tab's older brother, Walter, stepped up and helped raise his little brother, even though they just had 11 months between them. It was his mother that helped him decide he would be an actor. When their mother returned from work, she tried to make up for her absence. She didn't make enough for the family to have spare that they'll use to watch movies with, but she creatively found a way for her family to have quality time together. She took her boys to the shipyard to see how a ship got launched. It wasn't a theater, but it was thrilling for the actor. It was in one of those ship launching that Tab discovered that there were people called movie stars. The first star he saw was the amazing child actor, Shirley Temple, and with the delirious manner people acted around him, he also wanted what Shirley had but he just discovered what it meant to be a movie star. He didn't know the first thing to do to be a movie star. He had to look for it, but he didn't even know. But he soon came to know. Tab wasn't just a clueless dependent. He pulled his weight, and he worked jobs he could get his hands on. He worked as a stable hand due to his love of horses. Actually, in his later years, it would appear he loved horses more than people. Anyway, when he worked as a stable hand, Dick Clayton, a Hollywood hotshot, came to do a shoot for a movie magazine where Tab worked. He spotted Tab and knew the boy had a frame of a leading man. Clayton told the actor to find him if he would love to be an actor. You would expect that Hunter would jump at the opportunity, but he didn't. He was content with his stable hand job. Rather than take up Clayton's offer, the chiseled star instead joined the U.S. Coast Guard, lying about his age. But he was found out. When other Coast Guardsmen went to bars, Tab would go off to watch movies. It was odd, and it had the superior officers asking around to discover his age. When they found out he lied about his age, they kicked him out. Finally, he had had enough. He decided he wanted more than he got. So he found Clayton, and Clayton in turn introduced him to super agent Henry Wilson. Wilson, according to reports, was not a homosexual man, but had a knack for representing other closet stars like Rock Hudson. Wilson got to work on his potential new star. However, everything almost went down the drain. 
he had only gotten a minor role in the film Lawless, which frankly didn't help his career, but it did prove something. Tab had the makings to become the new heartthrob. It was after the film's release that his closely guarded secret came out, and it would have ruined him if he wasn't smart. The star attended a pajama party, which was described as more or less a party of men. Someone called the police on them, and when the cops arrived, they arrested everyone in the house, including Tab. Tab used his acting skills, which were little at the time, to feign ignorance. It worked, and he got charged with disorderly conduct. Tab felt his tab was clean, but in Hollywood, it's pointless to keep secrets. The hunk began to get roles that only relied on his masculinity and his appeal. His breakout film, Island of Desire, had a part to play in this. For most of the film, he was shirtless, his appeal oozing in every scene he appeared in. Women wanted him, but he wanted men. He began to explore his inner self more. Hunter started to form deep romantic relationships with other men, and one of these prominent men was figure skater Robbie Robertson. The two met when Hunter was figure skating. The star actor enjoyed the sport and found the time to participate in competitions. Their relationship was fun, but the rumors were not. The two couldn't be a normal couple. They both had their careers to think of and couldn't hang out together in public. The little time they were seen in public led to some rumors which led to a dark threat against Robbie. The U.S. Figure Skating Association allegedly wouldn't give Robbie a chance at the Worlds. Robbie had to make a choice. He chose his career, leaving his lover floundering in heartbreak. But the star would not be spending his years alone as another lover came not long after. However, before the star proved his mettle with Battle Cry, he got the lead role, beating other established stars. The role didn't fall cheaply for him. He had about 10 grueling screen tests before clinching the role over James Dean and Paul Newman, proven stars who also wanted the role. But another tragedy struck. The secret he thought was forgotten came to light. Tab wanted to get more serious roles, and to do this, he felt he needed an agent change. He didn't count on one thing. The vindictiveness of his agent. Wilson was himself a closet homosexual, but he didn't have any qualms giving a Hollywood gossip outlet confidential salacious details about the nature of Hunter's arrest five years prior. The 1955 America was shocked, and Tab thought that was the end of his career. When the confidential article came out, I thought my career was over. It wasn't the end. It was the beginning of improving his standing with the female audience more than ever. In 1956, on the valentine that followed his scandal, he got over 62,000 valentines. How did he do it? It was all Warner Bros. They began a brilliant campaign about how their star had only eyes for women. Publicly, Tab played along with the studio, and he went on the dates they arranged for him with the sexiest women in the industry. Notable among these women were Debbie Reynolds and Natalie Wood. Hunter loved Wood as he would a sister, and she, like Debbie, was also in on the ruse. When he and Wood went out, they ensured that cameras were nearby, and after their fake dates, Wood would sneak out to meet her real love interest, Dennis Hopper. Hunter, too, went to meet his new lover, Anthony Perkins. The two met at Los Angeles Chateau Marmont and hit it off. They began to date, but trouble lurked. Warner Bros. knew what their star was up to, but they didn't care. Paramount did. They wanted the two men to break it off. Hunter, well, he wasn't afraid of Paramount and continued with his romance with the star. The couple would go out together and discuss themselves heavily. Finally, it seemed that Hunter had met his happily ever after, or not. Their relationship crumbled. Like his first relationship, his new lover was loyal to his career more than him. As soon as he got the opportunity to improve his career, he betrayed Hunter. Perkins knew Tab wanted to play the lead role in the drama Fear Strikes Out, which would solidify Tab as more than an eye candy. Still, Anthony had his studio buy the drama to deprive Hunter of that opportunity. The two fell out, and Hunter's heartbreak coincided with the time his mother's mental health crumbled and he had to check her into a mental hospital. It was a tough period for the star, 
but things looked up for him in terms of his career, and as it rose, it crashed again when Hunter bought himself out of his Warner Bros. contract. As soon as he left Warner Bros., rumors of his private life gained traction. But no one definitely knew anything as the star was extremely private about his personal life. No one knew, not even his mother. Till she died, he didn't mention his orientation to her once, but he suspected she knew. Such was the extent of his privacy and inner conflict. He didn't know how his mother, a devoted Catholic, would react to it. He wouldn't get his opportunity to tell her as she died, and his brother, Walter, died too, leaving the star all alone. But he wasn't alone for long. When he got the part in Polyester, where he acted alongside Divine, he performed superbly and the film became a success. In seeking funds for a sequel, he met Alan Glasser, who is a young Fox executive. The two would spend the rest of their lives together until Hunter's death. Before his death, Hunter had settled his inner conflict and came out as a homosexual. He had a heart attack due to a blood clot and slumped on the floor lifelessly. His death stunned his partner, as Hunter till old age was still fit. But Hunter died a free man, away from his fears and doubt. Tab Hunter was not the only one with huge secrets in Hollywood. What was Gene Arthur's darkest secret? Find out from this video.